Hey witches, welcome to Busy Gritty Inked and Witchy, a magical living podcast for the busy witch. I'm Morgan, eclectic witch of almost 25 years, Avalon priestess, and busy witch. Here we'll talk all things witchy from current metaphysical happenings to my busy witch tips and tricks and everything in the in-between. This podcast is my personal journey filled with my knowledge, opinions, and unique way of looking at the world. Join me as I weave the magical and the mundane in every episode. Hey witches, welcome back to Busy, Gritty, Inked, and Witchy. I'm Morgan, and I'm doing an episode that I think has been my most requested topic ever. And this is on social media. I get requested this topic for like reels, TikToks, everything, everything. (laughs) And that is, I'm going to be talking about putting bitches into jars today. (laughs) Yes, the waning moon is upon us. And so I thought that it was finally time for me to teach you all what I mean when I say I'm putting bitches into jars and how to do it. Yeah, so that's what we're gonna, that's what we're going into today. So I did a whole lesson on not only spell jars, but also banishings and bindings in the Ink Spirit Coven at the beginning of the year. Because they had also been asking me, because I mention it a lot. I mention it in passing. I mention it in memes on social media. I mention it in podcasts or in other people's podcasts. Um, just small fun plug. If you've not been over to your average witches podcast this week, I am on there. And... Uh, there was a soundbite taken out of that one for <laughs> about me putting bitches into jars. So I do talk about it a lot in passing. And so the first people that were like, hey, can you teach us about it? Were the Ink Spirit members, my Ink Spirit Coven. And so back in, I think it was January, we did a whole lesson on spell jars, but we've also done banishing and binding. So that information, like the full information, I did, I am kind of reserving for them, you know, but what I wanted to do today for this podcast episode was almost like a blending of the two. So I'm going to talk about spell jars as far as banishing and binding spell jars. That's what we're going to do, because that's what I mean when I talk about putting bitches into jars. (laughs) Okay, so that is what I mean. So just to gain some clarification... When I talk about putting bitches into jars, my personal practice is banishing, using a spell jar for banishing a person away from me so that their energy no longer affects me, okay? Now, some witches do use spell jars in the same manner for hexing, and technically that's not what I'm doing. And I don't, you know, judge hexing versus non-hexing, cursing, non-cursing. I don't care. Whatever works for you and your practice works for you. Okay. So just because when I talk about putting bitches into jars, I'm not talking about hexing someone doesn't mean that you may go listen to another podcast somewhere else or see a TikTok or an Instagram reels or something where someone is putting a bitch in a jar and they are hexing them. Okay. So... Technically, this is not what I'm doing. I'm cutting the energetic cord between me and a person. I don't think I've ever... You can put toxic situations in a jar in the same manner. You can banish a toxic situation from having any more influence on you. I personally have not done that. So for me, it's people. It's always been people that have pissed me off, people that I'm just done with, People who are doing shit in the world that I just, I don't want to be affected by anymore. Um, yeah. And I, so I, I put them into a jar. I, I put their energy. We'll get to that. <laughs> but I, I put them in a jar and I bury them in my backyard. So whoever buys my property after we are done with it, um, there is a particular tree. If they dig it up, they're going to, they're going to find some, some treasures. They're going to find some treasures. (laughs) All right. So depending on the person, 
I may also, along with banishing them from having an effect on me anymore, from having an energetic tie to me, I may also do a return to sender if I know that they're actively doing something to me to try and hurt me or my family. Um, I, I've done karmic speed ups before, which let me tell you, karmic speed ups don't always, I mean, they can, but they can't. I can tell you right now, right now, um, there is a, there's a current situation going on that um, is, is something that I put into a jar a few years ago. Um, I, 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 I put someone in a jar, put them in my backyard, and um, I did a karmic speed up with that. And it, it, I don't know how much it sped it up because it's now all coming back, like karma's coming back to bite them in the ass big time. I can't say that it's all me or my spell. This person had a lot of shit coming towards them. Um, but I, I did do a karmic speed up for them. Basically, I think the way that I phrased it was I just wanted the world to see this person the way that I did. And it's coming true now. And so I've been very happy about that one, let me tell you. So things like return to sender, karmic speed ups, whatever you want to say. I mean, that honestly depends on the person for me. It depends on the person, the situation. Um, all of that can be different. Okay. Now I will let you know that generally speaking, herbs, colors, gemstones, all of that, that are for protection and banishing are often the exact same herbs that you would use for hexing. So it all depends on your comfort level. Again, your beliefs, whether you believe in the threefold law, the you know rule of three, the Wiccan read, I mean, whatever you follow. Um, to me, I've always been able to justify it because I'm not hexing a person. Um, I'm not trying to cause them harm. I just want that I'm done with them. I'm, I'm done with them and their energy. And so that's, that's what I'm doing is I am taking all of that energy, all of that connection, all of that frustration, all of that pissed off anger. Cause yeah, I mean, if you don't piss me off, I'm not going to want to put you in a jar. You know what I mean? But somehow these people have affected me negatively. And so I take all of that. Um, I do practice anger magic as well, but I take all of that put it into a container, seal the container, and then I bury it. And it's all very symbolic to me. It is, I am done with your shit. I am done with you causing me or my family harm. I'm done with your energetic connection. So I put it all into a jar, seal that shit up and bury it because I don't want to deal with it anymore. Okay. So that's what it is for me. And however you decide to phrase things, however you decide to put um, that, whatever energy you decide to put in there, that is all up to you and what you're comfortable with, okay? Um, this is best done. I mentioned it at the beginning. This is best done during the waning moon phase, which happens after the full moon phase. So that is why I'm doing this episode now. We are technically in a waning moon phase. And the waning moon phase lasts from right after the full moon up until the new moon. Okay, so you've got about two weeks of playtime, maybe a little less, to work with the waning moon energy. And the waning moon is when, I preach it all the time, do not release what is no longer serving you at the full moon. Hold on to it for just a couple of more days. Release it at the waning moon. The waning moon is when the moon is getting smaller in the sky. That's what it looks like. Okay, so we're going from a big, full, bright, beautiful moon and slowly, 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 it gets darker and darker and darker because of the shadow of, of the earth on the moon and all that good stuff. So it looks like the moon is getting smaller. So because the moon is getting smaller, it's releasing its energy. It's releasing itself. Okay, that's what you are also to do. To do. So it's time to do banishing spells do cord cuttings, release what no longer serves you, um, let go, do cleansings, all of that kind of good stuff. Okay, so that is why it is best to do a put a bitch in a jar spell <laughs> during the waning moon. Okay, um, all right, 
Sorry, I'm just checking my notes. That's why, like, if you're watching on YouTube, I keep looking down. Because I do, y'all, I have like two pages in this. Let me show y'all. Yeah. And for those listening, if you want to see on YouTube, I have two pages of notes. That's what I normally, that's what a normal podcast episode is for me, is two, two pages of notes and lots of rambling. <laughs> lots of tangents. Okay. So in order to put a bitch in a jar... I don't know if I didn't clarify this. I don't know if I need to clarify this, but just in case there is like a super beginner witch, um, we're not actually putting humans into jars here. Uh, we're, we're energetically putting bitches into jars. Yeah. With that said, you do need a part of the person. Okay. It could be their name. It could be their picture. I'll get to that in a second. All right. But that's just the it for any spell jar. And I don't think I've done... Okay, so I have not done a podcast episode on spell jars, but I know my first Awakened Witchcraft with Morgan on YouTube, that first video was on spell jars and container spells. So that goes into it a little bit more. Anyway, I do so many different things now between the podcast, the YouTube segment now, which is twice a month, and then I'm teaching in the Ink Spirit Coven twice a month. There's just, there's a lot. There's a lot of going on and I don't know where I've talked about stuff sometimes. <laughs> All right. So your ingredients or tools, whatever, that you need to put a bitch in a jar. You need a glass jar. Okay. I do recommend glass. Um, so there's been some spec, there's been some TikToks and they went viral a year or so ago, maybe a little bit longer, where somebody had found like a plastic Mountain Dew bottle um, that was filled with nails and all kinds of stuff. And somebody opened it and they had done like a TikTok video of it and it had washed up in a river. And that's where I personally don't agree with doing spell jars or yeah, spell contain container spells in plastic, because generally speaking, you are going to be throwing it away in the trash or burying it or releasing it in a body of water, depending on whatever your beliefs or your dominant element is, okay? Um, what, however you feel comfortable disposing of the spell or getting rid of the spell, like getting it away from you, okay? Um, so I don't agree with putting it in a plastic bottle or a plastic jug. Um, I just, I just don't. Uh, if you're going to throw it in a landfill, maybe, but I mean, I, re I recycle plastic. So, and you can't really send your spell jar off to the recycling center. So I personally would stay away from plastic. Now, does that mean if you're using a glass jar, is there the possibility that your jar can break open? Um, there is, there is. Do I believe that if your jar breaks open, then your spell is null and void? I don't because you put all of the intention in there when you were doing it. And that's what matters is your intention. Okay. So those are just my personal beliefs. But I, I do use glass. I have used tins before, um, but that's when I am getting ready to probably throw it in the trash. So yeah, there is a difference. But um Actually, it's just what I've had before, I guess. <laughs> so anyway, a glass jar, um, whether it has a screw top or a cork, that's up to you. That, that, to me, I, I don't think it matters one way or the other. You're still going to drip wax on it anyway to metaphysically seal your intention. So you can do that on a screw, screw top jar or a cork jar. You're going to need a black candle. You're going to need a black gemstone. This is, the, look, this is what I use. You all asked me what I use. So I'm, I'm going to tell you what I use. Okay. If you Google, if you watch TikTok, Instagram, you might find some other things. Um, this is just, this is what I do. I always put a black gemstone in there. So whether that's onyx, tourmaline, sometimes hematite. Um, but yeah, I usually use a black gemstone and then you will need something of the person. So any type of container spell, any type of spell jar, you have to have something of the person's energy who you are casting this spell for, okay? So if it's a spell jar for you, you know, like if you're trying to do a healing spell jar or a love spell jar or a money spell jar, you would put something of yourself into it. So hair is the easiest thing, okay? The true, the same is true for 
if you're doing, if you're putting a bitch in a jar, you have to have something of theirs to put into the jar. Now, this can be as easy as a picture of them, okay, that you either took or you print off the internet. Um, their name, if you have their full name, that is way better. If you have their full name and their birth date, even if it's just like a month and a day, that's even better. The more information you can put on that piece of paper, you write it down, the more information you have about that person, the more specific the energy gets, okay? So if you have an address, birth date, um, at social security number, I mean, whatever it is that you happen to have, use it, okay? Um, another possibility is hair, fingernail clippings, you know, things, a piece of their clothing, um, a piece of jewelry from them. Um, I mean, all of that will work. And then herbs, okay? So these are herbs that I have used in the past, okay? You do not have to have all of these. You can have one of them. You can have two of them. Um, you can have whichever ones you're comfortable working with, okay? But these are general ones that I have used in the past. And that is black salt, wormwood, mandrake, Queen Anne's lace, devil's claw root, angelica, whorehound, witch's grass, mullion or mulling, and red clover. Now, if you're sitting there and you're like, Morgan, where the hell do I get these herbs at? Uh, shameless plug, inkgoddesscreations.com is where you can get them. We have a magical pick your own <laughs> where you there's a whole list. Um, so if you're, I know a lot of you actually learn from the podcast, you're writing shit down, you're pausing it. I know you are. Um, and if you want to, you can take this list and compare it to the list on the website. Um, but you can get them at inkedgoddesscreations.com. And these are the ones that like, I know we have them all in stock because like when I go to do jars, I like, when I go to put bitches into jars, I literally go over, take some of the herbs off the shelves create a blend. And that's what I take home. <laughs> so, uh, shameless plug done. All right. Other possible items that you can include in your spell jar are nails or tacks, which will break up the energy, energetic connection that that person has to you. And it will also protect you from their bullshit in the future. Um, mirror pieces, so you can get like the little craft mirrors. I mean, I've seen little bags of them at like Michael's. Um, this, th this is fun. If the person's done you wrong, okay, and, and they don't, maybe they don't know it or they won't acknowledge it, um, but you're just done with their shit. Then you can add all this stuff in there. Add a little mirror or two to the jar so that they, they have to reflect on their shit. They have to reflect on their bad shit that they put into the world. It's just a fun little like play on words, but it works. Um, graveyard dirt is another one you can put in there. Um, I do get asked whether I personally put anything of myself in the jar. For example, urine, blood, anything. I don't because I don't want my energy attached to this person anymore. The purpose of this type of spell jar for banishing and getting rid of someone is to cut those ties. If I put something of myself in that jar, that keeps that tie going. So I personally do not add anything like that. Now, if you're doing a cursing or a hexing jar, um, your urine is a very probable, like it's, it's a very commonly used ingredient. But that's if you're doing a hexing or a cursing jar, okay? All right, so basically, you add all your shit to the jar. And as you add it, you're visualizing the person getting as far away from you as possible, okay? You visualize any connection or cord or anything that ties you to that person. Like you're talking an energetic, if you wanna visualize like an actual stream of light or a cord or something that connects you to this person. You then visualize cutting it or dissolving it or having it just vanish. Okay. Cause you're, that's what you're trying to do is you're trying to disconnect you from this person 
so that they can go as far the fuck away from you as possible, okay? And that's what, as you're adding each item to the jar, this is what you're visualizing. You're visualizing that person leaving you alone. Their energy no longer affecting you. They're fucking off as far away as possible. (laughs) These are the types of things you're picturing as you're adding every item to the jar, okay? When you get to the end of it, put put on your top, your lid, your cork, whatever. And then you want to seal the jar. So even if it's a screwed top jar, you want to, like you've closed it, but you want to seal your spell. And the best way to like physically, but also metaphysically or energetically seal your spell is to pour or drip candle wax on top of it. Okay. So do you, you light your black candle And you can have that candle lit like the whole time you're doing this if you want to, or you can light it. I think I I tend to light it at the beginning of what I'm doing. Assemble, like I grab everything together and have it near me. And then I will light the black candle. And then I will add everything to the jar, really focusing on my intention. Seal the jar, and then I just pick up the candle And it takes a while, but you just very slowly drip candle wax all over the top of the lid or the cork so that it is metaphysically or energetically sealing your spell. And that's what you're visualizing as every little drop of wax gets added onto that thing. It's like this spell is now sealed. You know, their energy will no longer affect me. Um, I banish them from my life, you know, that kind of stuff, okay? Um, You can also tie a black cord around the jar before sealing it with wax. So if you take long black cord and just constantly wrap it, you know, up over top of the lid to the bottom of the jar and keep doing that in all different directions, That's another way of binding that person into the jar and away from you. And then once you're done and you tie off the cord, um, I would probably do three knots too. That's just me personally. I like to do things in threes. Um, But after tying three knots, I would then take a black candle and pour it over the knot, but then also pour it over the top of the, the jar as well. So you're essentially sealing in that binding cord along with your spell, the jar, the whole, all of it, okay? And then um, I bury it in my backyard just because it's there. Um, (laughs) I think it's super funny to whoever buys our property after us and maybe digs it up. I think it would be hilarious. Um, You can, depending on the spell, you can throw it in your trash, uh, like your trash outside of your house. Never keep a banishing jar in your house. That's the first thing. And I, if you are either an Ink Spirit Coven member or if you've listened to podcasts in the past or if you've learned anything from me at any point, I try not to say now, like always or never. I try to, because to me, there's not a lot of things like every person's practice is so different and so unique to them that what I might think, oh, never do this. Someone else is like, oh, I do that all the time, you know. But if you're trying to banish someone from you, from your life and from your existence, then keeping the spell jar in your home just doesn't make sense. So I know if you're like, but Morgan, you're burying it in your backyard. I am, but I'm not going to dig it up and look at it every day. I, I honestly forget that they're there. A lot of times until I'm going on a rant. And let me tell you too, I have no I have no idea how many people are in that spot in my yard. I have forgotten at this point. Um, I, I can remember three. I don't know how many more there are. I don't know. I, I Yeah, this is why like I do this so often because when I'm done with someone's shit, I'm done with their shit. <laughs> and that's just me. Um, So that's why like, and it's never anything petty. It's not like, you know, oh my gosh, they forgot to give me extra pickles on my burger that, you know, McDonald's workers going in a jar in my backyard. That's not, I'm not petty like that. If I'm going to go to do anything with my time and my energy as a witch, I'm going to make sure that it's justified in my mind or for my energy, okay, or for my life, you know? 
So if I'm gonna pull out all the ingredients and take the time to put you in a jar and put you in my backyard, it's because you fucking deserve to be there. All right, that's, that's another thing, okay? So I don't know how many people are back there, honestly, or how many, you know, jar, spell jars I have buried in the backyard. I have no idea, but it's not in my house. It's not in my sacred space. It is outside of my physical dwelling. Um, So therefore I deem that perfectly fine. Okay. You may also decide to, if you're going to throw it away, try to throw it into a bin, a trash bin that's outside of your house. Um, if you can time it to be in the waning moon and on trash day, that's even better because then it's staying, you know, around you as little as possible. But then like if you're throwing it in an outside bin and then the trash people come, they're going to take it even further away. Um, and depending on what your intention was, depending on how dark you went with it, you could bury it in a graveyard. That's, yeah, that's another option. Um, so people have asked for my exact steps, exact words, exact ingredients, um, for this. I don't have any. I I can't stress that enough. I don't have any exact anything anywhere. I don't even know how many people are in jars in my backyard. I don't know what I put in their jars. I don't know what I said when I buried them. I don't know my level of pissed offness when I did it. You know, I have no idea. Um, I have learned within the last few months, actually, that I am a chaos witch which does not sound the way that you think it sounds. Um, If you are brand new to this podcast, I did do an episode. uh, Episode 131 was on Untamed Witchcraft, and I do talk about chaos magic in there and how a lot of witches will probably find that they are chaos witches. Because what chaos magic is, it's uh, doing what you feel like doing at that moment what you feel the spell or the ritual calls for, what your intention calls for. And it could be something completely different than you've ever done before. So that's what I realized when I had to, when I was researching everything for the Ink Spirit Coven for this year of rewilding your inner witch. And we talked about uh, Untamed Witchcraft this month, August. Yeah, I did the lesson on that a couple of weeks ago. Um, I realized I was a chaos witch because I hardly ever write things down as far as spells. That's not great. You should probably at least have a record so you can know what worked and what didn't work. <laughs> um, but when it comes to putting bitches into jars, I I don't know what I say. I don't know what I do. I don't, I mean, I have the, this is the basic outline. The, what I'm sharing with you all today are the basic ingredients, the basic outline for what I do. But if I don't know how many people are in my backyard, I don't know what I did for each one of the spells either. I don't write it down uh, because what I'm doing is I'm building off of my energy and my power and what I feel like is needed at that moment. And that's what I'm harnessing. Those emotions, like if if it's come to a point where I'm going to put you in my backyard, then I'm, I'm done. And I am at my breaking point. So I take all of that energy and infuse it into the spell, into the spell jar. And I say whatever the fuck I want to say. And I put whatever the fuck I want to put in there. Um, Sometimes it's been nice. I've been clear and been like, okay, well, you're no longer going to affect me. Your negative energy, blah, 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 blah. And then sometimes it's, bitch, you're going in my yard. Bye. And I dig a hole and then fill it in. Ironically enough, too, because I do get asked, well, if I'm putting them all in the same hole, do I, like, as I'm digging a hole for a new one, do I find an old one in there? I don't. That's the weirdest thing ever. That That is weird, let me tell you, okay? I'm, I'm going to be the first to admit it because it is super weird. You would think that if I'm going to the same spot around the same tree, and I know I have at least three people in there, that the next time I go to, like, I dig up a little bit, and then I'm, oh, look, oh, there's so-and-so. Nope. I don't ever find the jars again. So that's just magic. And that's what I'm going to stick with on that one. (laughs) So there you go. No two jars are the same. Say what you feel like saying. Put in the jar what you feel like putting in the jar. Raise the energy that you want to raise. 
and then be done with it. Okay. That is another thing. If you're going to take the, the time and the energy and the magic to put someone in a jar and put them in the backyard and cut your ties with them, then cut your ties with them. Okay. This means block their phone number, you know, don't go to their social media and stalk them. Um, take these efforts in the mundane world to amplify or support the work that you're doing in the magical world. Okay. You cannot banish a person, cut the cords, put them in your backyard, and then you climb into bed and go stalk their Instagram to see what they did that day. It doesn't happen like that, that you're, you're negating the magic you just did. Okay. So you have to take the steps in the real world that support your magical endeavors. Okay. That's it. That's what I have for you all today. I hope that this was fun. I hope if nothing else, if there's any of you who've listened to the whole episode, but you're sitting there with this look on your face, like, man, that bitch is crazy. She's talking about putting people in jars. <laughs> have some fun with it. That is all that that's what's important about your magic. Have fun. Do what you feel. Do what you're called to do and embrace it. Like I think All of us became witches to take back our power and to have our power stay with us. And if someone is pissing you off and you want them to leave you the fuck alone, then you have the power to do that. So as a witch, you're almost denying part of yourself, part of your powers, if you're not at least trying something like this. And I'm not talking anything bad about love or light witches. Okay. I used to be a love and light witch. If someone was pissing me off, if someone was harming me or my family, I used to sit down and send them love and light and compassion. And then I woke up. And if you have not, if you're still a love and light witch, then that is your practice. And I do respect that about you. But just hear me a little bit when I say, if you are always dealing with everything in love and light, you're, you are not all love and light. You have shadows. You have darkness. So you're actually denying an entire section of yourself and your power. The key is keeping it in balance, which is why I do consider myself a gray witch now, if we have to put a label on it. Because some instances in my life call for love and light and they call for me to take a deep breath and send that person compassion because they're not giving it to themselves and they're lashing out at me because of it. Okay. And then sometimes the bitch needs to be put in a jar in my backyard because I'm done with her shit. Okay. And I said her, I don't know if I've ever put a guy in the backyard. That's a fun fact. (laughs) Just because I don't deal with with men in that manner anymore. You know what I mean? (laughs) So it's, I think I have all women in my backyard. Yeah, that's fun. So, yep, that's everything I have for you all today. I hope you had fun. Um, I hope you learned something. I hope that maybe I even caused you to think in a different way. Because that's what I love doing. I love teaching. I love causing people to think. That's my favorite thing. I love, I will play devil's advocate just to play devil's advocate, but I also love to play devil's advocate if I strongly believe in the subject that I am am advocating for. (laughs) Um, And this is one of them, you know, especially being a converted love and light witch. I love teaching about this. I love teaching about the spicier side of witchcraft. I love teaching about the gray areas because there are so many and That's what we're doing in the Ink Spirit Coven. Did you like that transition? Like, yeah, transition over to the Ink Spirit Coven is my online coven. I teach a class and facilitate a workshop there every month. I hang out in the Facebook group with all of the members. They are super supportive. Most of us are eclectic witches. Uh, We have some beginner witches all the way up to witches who have been practicing for over 40 years. And this month, so moving into September, Uh, We're moving into the element of water for September, October, and November. We're going to be covering things like finding your flow in life, uh, tapping into your intuition, healing your witch wound, um, ritual baths, oil making, all kinds of stuff. That's all going to be in the fall season 
So September, October, November. Um, and then in the winter, so December, January, February, we're moving into the element of earth. But if this sounds great to you, if you really dig my vibe and the way that I give you information and the way that I make you think, because it is a great thing, then head to inkedspirit.com to learn more, sign up. And if you use the coupon code podcast five all together and the number five, so all together, uh, then that'll give you $5 off your first month. And yeah, this month coming up is finding your flow and uh, tapping into your intuition and then ritual oil blending is what we're specifically doing in September. So I wanna thank you all for being here, for giving me a platform to share my crazy knowledge and finally teach you all about putting bitches into jars because it's super fun. And I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for listening and I will see you all again soon. Bye.